They're not the rich and famous. Their profit comes not from the thing they sell, but the good they do. Our nation has more than 1.5 million nonprofits that employ one out of 10 Americans, providing services that otherwise go unfulfilled, keeping our community connected when all else fails. But nonprofits often lack the tools to properly promote themselves, to inspire more donors and volunteers and clients to their cause. That's where I come in. I've been in the nonprofit world for nearly 20 years. I connect nonprofits with marketing professionals who donate their time and expertise so that, at the end of the day, these life giving organizations can do more, do better, by creating more. That's right, buzz. You break your arm, you get a cast. Cut yourself and you get stitches. Most injuries are apparent to the naked eye and have an obvious treatment. But wounds to the brain can be invisible and the symptoms go unrecognized and untreated. And with a new brain injury occurring every 21 seconds in the United States, the need and the marketing challenge for the nonprofit we are featuring on today's episode of Buzz are more vital than ever. I'm Jody Judge. I'm the Executive Director with Brain Injury Services of Southwest Virginia. I am Alex Barge. I am Director of Development and Marketing with Brain Injury Services of Southwest Virginia. Uh, we are a nonprofit that serves children and adults who have acquired a brain injury. So folks who have uh, maybe had a stroke, had a brain tumor, have fallen, have been part of a car accident. Our service area is the second largest service area in the state of just over 14,000 square miles. And so we, we run the gamut as far down as the very tip far southwest. We go all the way up to Allegheny and over to Campbell, Lynchburg, and then um, kind of south side to central to uh, Charlotte and Halifax. Our services are person-centered, so it's based on the individualized goals that our consumers come to the table with. Uh, so we had a great story about um, a consumer, which is what we, we call our clients, consumers, who wanted to go into his backyard just to watch birds. And he was unable to do so because it wasn't accessible, because there was steps to go in the backyard. And, and so our case manager was able to find a local organization, Bland Ministries, who were willing to come out and build a deck for them. So they purchased supplies, purchased the supplies and built a deck. And so it's hard to convey that, I mean, it's easy to say Bland Ministries did this, but it's hard to convey that it would not have happened without a case manager finding the resources for him to, to do so. I'm Stacy Nichols. I'm the project director here at Brain Injury Services of Southwest Virginia for our telehealth services. So we have some programs where we provide things like mindfulness, or yoga, or music therapy, or art therapy, tai chi. Um, we have many, many different types of, of programs that we provide, and all of these are data-driven. Um, we know from the scientific research and the literature available that these programs are very beneficial to help our brain injury survivors uh, continue to learn and grow post-injury. We also offer a PALS program, and we're really excited about PALS. A lot of times you'll see after injury because there's a change in the individual. Um, sometimes it's a change in, in mood, behaviors, or simply the ability to do some of the things that they were able to do before. Their friends drop away. They become more isolated. And so although our other programs focus more on those things that keep them independent, there's still that need. There's still that need of socialization and companionship. And that's what PALS provides with volunteers um, throughout the community. Alex Barge witnessed brain injury services in action long before he started working there. As far back as he could remember, his mother struggled with a variety of mental and physical challenges. In 2011, she was diagnosed with having suffered a brain injury at a younger age, perhaps from an abusive relationship. Uh, Jody was actually her case manager. Uh, and, and they helped her with getting organized. Uh, so she had challenges taking her medication, so they helped figure out a good system for her that worked for her to be able to independently do that. Uh, they helped her balance her budget, um, which I 
studied accounting in college, but she didn't want her son to help her balance her budget. Uh, she wanted to be able to do it on her own, but she was happy to accept the help of brain injury services for that. So we were founded in the year 2000 after Fran and Greg Rooker experienced a traumatic event with their son Jason Rooker. And it was out of that experience that they realized there was no one in our area that could assist families that had a loved one who had experienced a brain injury. So they developed the Jason Foundation, which then um, also founded Brain Injury Services of Southwest Virginia. And they started in the New River Valley. And that is why the name Brain Injury Services of Southwest Virginia was the perfect name at the time. Um, also, uh, Jason uh, did a beautiful, uh, beautiful painting that encompassed these butterflies and it hangs in our office here as a reminder of why we're doing the work that we're doing. Um, and that is what um, um, caused us to choose the butterfly as our logo. Um, butterflies have a lot of meaning and um, you know there's that whole transformation that happens and that whole um, kind of evolution of miraculous change and transformation which is what we're trying to produce in our, in our families. So through the years not only have we evolved like that butterfly we're also grown and expanded to going from just serving the New River Valley to now our footprint of over 14,000 square miles and so what we're trying to accomplish with choosing the best name for brain injury services of Southwest Virginia is when people hear that, they know what we do and where we serve. Every other day we get a phone call asking if we're a doctor's office or a clinical services or uh, who don't quite understand what, what we do. I run into several participants a week who have difficulty recalling the name of our organization and, and they have warm feelings towards us and they appreciate what it is that we do, but it's very difficult when you have such a long name uh, for our participants who have short-term memory uh, difficulties to remember who we are. B-I-S-S-W-V-A, Bishwaz, kind of our, our nickname, but that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we hope to get out of rebranding is better convey what we do, who we serve, and where we serve, and hopefully a shorter name. <laughs> it's a difficult process. We're trying to honor um, all that has been, as well as capturing our vision for all that is to come. Like so many nonprofits, Brain Injury Services of Southwest Virginia was born from pain and loss. Greg Rooker, once a well-known newspaper publisher in Southwest Virginia, and his wife, Fran, founded the nonprofit in 2000 following a family tragedy. The couple now live mostly in Florida, so I recently connected with them by Zoom to learn their story. Okay, it was 1996. Hmm. Uh, Jason was um, 10 years old, and he had an accident while playing in the yard. Um, accidentally hung himself and suffered a severe anoxic brain injury. And uh, we were in the hospital and rehab with him for 11 months. He was quadriplegic, he could not speak. After 11 months, we came home and had the standard OT, PT, speech therapies, but we just didn't have any guidance anywhere uh, of how to live with this brain injury and Jason in his condition for long term. How do you move forward? How do you set a goal and then accomplish that goal? And um, it just was not available. So we decided that when Jason was feeling better and, and, and accomplishing some of his goals and we were we had time, we were going to do something about that. Then, then suddenly he died in September of 97. And, um, and so we started on that path with brain injury services in the year 2000. That's when we um, founded that through the Jason Foundation. We also started educating our legislators on the needs of people with brain injury, collaborating with Northern Virginia to get the first brain injury money ever in the state for like 12 years yeah. or so. You know, it always amazes me because I feel like, yes, we founded it, but there was help from 
someplace else, beyond. I felt like Jason was pulling the strings or something because, you know, today their brain injury services covers more than 14,000 square miles of Southwest Virginia and beyond. And they work with, um, provide free services for at least 500 families a year. I know all of this was born out of tragedy. Um, and I'm just personally in awe of you guys for having taken what was I know an exceptionally dark time and providing some light and hope for other people who are find themselves in similar situations. So on behalf of a, a community, I thank you. It's been 25 years this year, you know, since he passed away. Sometimes it's like yesterday and sometimes it's like it's been gone a long time. So, um, well, we both think he came into this life for a purpose. And we think the purpose was to help brain, the brain injured. And um, if he had not come into this world and had not died, uh, that wouldn't have been accomplished. Right. It, uh, it always amazes me how many wonderful people, because of this, have come into our lives that we never would have met before. And how many people we've been able to help. Uh, and, and there are so many people who have no idea about Jason's story and who've never met us. And when I see the progress they make in their own lives, because of the services, it just warms my heart, uh, brings tears to my eyes. And um, we're just very grateful we had a son who has been able to touch others in this way. To lead a rebranding for Brain Injury Services of Southwest Virginia, I turned to my good friends Bill Gilmer, Heather Alderman, and Chris DiIorio from WordSprint, a regional marketing firm that has appeared in previous episodes of Buzz helping Mill Mountain Zoo and Eastmont Community Foundation. What I didn't know when I first reached out to Bill was his personal um, connection to the Rookers. Personally. When Michael first mentioned this to me, I jumped at it because uh, I have a long history with brain injury because I was good friends with Greg Rooker mm -hmm. in Withville way back in the day. Um, I could tell you lots of funny Greg Rooker stories if you would ever like to hear those. Um, Greg tried to hire me away from WordSprint several times uh, early and he wanted me to be the production manager for his uh, newspaper, the Southwest, Southwest Virginia Enterprise. And he offered me way more money than I was making at the time. <laughs> but I always turned it down because I like doing word spread. And uh, we really admire and respect the work you guys do. So we are very excited to uh, plunge in, plunge deep on this one and come up with some ideas and thoughts that might, that might float. So really looking forward to working with you. Thank you. And Bill, thank you guys so much again for coming on Buzz and helping out another great nonprofit in brain injury services of Southwest Virginia. And we'll see how long we'll be using that name moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Macy Weinbarger, and we live in Craig County, Virginia. Try to make I'm it. 17, I'm a senior, and I'm about to graduate. While Word Sprint got to work, I decided to visit some families who have been helped by brain injury services. Families like Sherry Weinbarger and her daughter Macy, a seemingly healthy young girl until the age of six when she was diagnosed with a brain tumor. A surgery in 2011 removed most of the tumor, but she was left with a traumatic brain injury. Brain Injury Services has attended the individualized education plan, which is through the school, her plan for the upcoming year. She has been granted uh, funds for camps like Camp Easter Seals that gives her the chance to get away, to be with other special needs people. They um, found grants to help her to go to Healing Strides to do therapeutic riding. Macy is an avid horse lover. When Macy first started riding horses, 
she was only able to sit on the horse for, for about five or 10 minutes. Now Macy can sit through an hour lesson and that has been a big uh, benefit for her, her ability to set up straighter, to, to have a little more balance. It's helped her to, to walk a little better. Now that she's 17 and moving into the adult world, Brain Injury Services will be helping to give us a direction in defining services for her work, for continued therapies, for camps, for her, her horse riding, which she dearly loves. They are uh, a wealth of knowledge in giving us information for modifications for the home to help assist Macy in um, being as independent as possible. I hope as Macy becomes an adult to give her as much independence as possible. I hope she can live the fullest life that we can possibly give her. This has been a scary time in our life. We were given this healthy child and um, she, we were thankful that she is physically still very healthy. It's scary. Um, without brain injury services, we would be floundering. In Floyd County, I visited Rosara Perez Perez. A victim of both gang violence and an abusive husband, Rosara fled her native Mexico with her two sons. Her older boy, Brian, had suffered a brain injury at birth. With help from Tara Orlando, president of the nonprofit Floyd Friends of Asylum Seekers, Rosara shared her story with me. They've helped me greatly when I needed it most. Since I was about ready to go nuts, I saw my son, he was dying. He was. I was getting all these bills, hospital bills. De las ambulancias. ambulances y Dios mío yo decía qué voy a hacer and I, I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? But thanks to them and this organization, they helped us. They helped me pay these bills. So thank God now I don't have medical bills. And the medicine now that the child is taking are working. Before I was afraid because daily he was having issues. He would have these headaches or we thought he was going to faint or he was going to start having convulsions. But now no more. La organización, la organización de Bra yeah, brain um, services, injury Ella services, brought us materials to make piñatas, y, and, y sí. Ella y el grupo nos ha traído and pinturas, they brought us pinceles, paints and uh, cuadros, um, uh, y e nos trajo easels cuadros. and um, um, paintbrushes and all the necessary things for painting. El niño le ayuda it helps him tremendously. Con, con arte, él, le el dolor when he's starting to get his headache, dice, he would tell me, vamos a please, please come, let's go paint. Digo, so I stop haciendo, what I'm doing, and we start painting, dibujar, and he'll start drawing, and I'll start painting with him. And little by little, the pain starts to disappear, and he's feeling better. Gracias al apoyo de ellos y de los del otro grupo también de que Thanks to the assistance we're getting, they've helped me quite a lot. Han ayudado mucho. Yo ya estoy más tranquila, pues pagaron I'm calmer. Yo de bien el hospital. Me han ayudado con They've helped me los niños. Greatly. Tratan de hacerlo. And they also helped me with the children, helping make them feel para trabajar. Welcomed and give them things to keep them amused and occupied. Porque gracias a eso también el niño he says the, the child has changed a lot. He's now, it's obvious that he's much happier. Now he smiles and he laughs. Before, he was, he seemed like he was always mad. And now, now he's more motivated and he, he feels more alive and more excited to be alive. And in Roanoke, I met Francine Casango, 
a refugee from Congo by way of South Africa in 2016. In 2019, her car was struck from behind while she was driving, and she suffered a debilitating brain injury. And they took me to the ER. Right there, they didn't see something. But later, a few days later, I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. For two years, Francine struggled just to move and experience the brightness of sunlight. These days, thanks to Brain Injury Services, she's able to make daily walks to a Roanoke community garden where as part of her therapy, she tends a plot. When um, the first case manager meets me, they start right away helping me. To help me to find right, uh, right doctors, right place to go, and they were with me to all my appointments. How many appointments would you say you had? In one year, I had 131 appointments, doctor's appointments. I am having some uh, space at community garden that I, uh, my friend helped me to get there. So I'm working there by walking to that place and coming back. I can read. I could not read for five minutes. Now I can read for 15 minutes. And not just reading, reading and processing. I was not able to do that. I can process what I'm reading. Since I've been doing that is about two months. I started in end of February. I regain my right side. I regain my balance. I can say about 80% of my balance has come back. I was having trouble to walk. This leg, they were working on it every day. Now I can walk without cane, completely. I can use my hands with no pain anymore. Sometime, if the brain is acting, I can have the pain now. But without that, I don't have much pain anymore. So I like the kind of walking outside. And this hill going down and up is a hiking. I had the work and my heart was kind of beating so fast and I was getting tired, palpitation, all kind of feelings. But my heart became stronger. I'm sleeping better than ever. Maybe there's some other venues. That we I'd like to thank you guys for coming, Jody, Alex, to join Heather, Chris, and me. Show you some of the ideas we've been working for, working on. And we were trying to come up with a different name that's maybe more accurate to what you guys do. Uh, maybe keep the butterfly, maybe not. Maybe have a brain in there, maybe not. But keep the words brain injury. Want some continuity. Where we started was words. When we had those initial meetings, <clears throat> and you guys thought we were not paying attention because we were doing this all the time, it's because we were writing down all the words you were saying. These are the words that you said in alphabetical order. We even gave them a frequency. We counted how many times you said those words. We gave them an emphasis, and this is versus each other. It's unique values here, one through 29. And this is subjective, but this is what we heard, and this is something we can discuss later and rearrange, but that's where we were. And you can see where I'm going. If we have a frequency and an emphasis, we have a score. So having done that, we started playing the word game. Here's where we are now. What if we went there? What if we went here? So then we hopped into design stuff. Oh my That's cool. Wow. That you, got, neat. you got some butterfly oh, there. Yeah. You got some butterfly there. Look at that. That is neat. This one. As fancy as the London Symphony Orchestra logo, right? <laughs> yeah. huh. That's the tree in the brain. Butterfly still. And the tree in the brain. Wow. Different sort of brain image. Oh my goodness. These are incredible. Yeah, I think our yeah, challenge is going to be figuring out which one we <laughs> did. I mean, oh, there, there are a lot to choose from. These are all great. So, we have our favorites. Chris likes the brain, the tree, specialist. This is Heather's favorite. That's actually a dandelion. 
sure. giving way to butterflies. Dandelion is kind of a symbol of hope, especially with kids. This is my favorite. I like being edgy. I think you call it hope because that was the most important word. Hmm. So that's where we've landed. Oh, what a soft, <laughs> incredible landing. We, we can show you how some of these would look as stationary. Okay. Uh, as business cards. We used Alex for all these. <laughs> what do you think? <clears throat> I like them all. <laughs> I, I mean, I I'm just blown away. You know, when we started this process, what made the process so difficult is is trying to capture what we're doing, where we're doing it, and thinking through all the various things, googling if people are going to find us. Like, how do we go from here, and how do we honor where we've come from? and accomplish where we're trying to go. And so there was a lot of things to consider. Um, and so to be transparent, I wasn't really sure what we would see coming in, you know, based on all of those various different barriers that I discuss, I am blown away. I feel like we have decisions to make, but um, we can only make a really good one here with these options.